All right, this video is going to be a second look at some Ravens pass concepts and how they relate or compare to the rest of the NFL. This is being presented from a perspective of uh, trying to help us all see where there are similarities and areas that you know, the Ravens might need to improve on. Uh, some of the questions I'm trying to address or at least bring up, do other teams run similar concepts as the Ravens? Is, is the timing different when they do so? Are they using the same protection schemes? If the Ravens are running similar schemes to the Bills, Chiefs, Eagles, Chargers, among others, and they're using similar timing and route combinations, then is there really any merit to those people who are complaining about the Ravens' route concepts, specifically the balance and the spacing of them? To, to try and answer all of that, or at least further the conversation, I originally intended this video to focus on three concepts, over routes, the mesh concept and variations of it, and then finally, RPOs, run pass option plays. And what ended up happening was I found so many similarities with other teams in the NFL in terms of how the Ravens run their RPOs that this video really became a monster. It's, it's really taken a ton of time to edit and organize. I hope you guys enjoy it. Let's take a look at the first RPO concept the Ravens and others use, and they use it to great effect all across the NFL, is the snag RPO concept. The characteristics of this, whether it's the Ravens or anyone running it, is someone going out into the flats. Some people call it a flat route, a shoot route. In any case, the number one receiver to that side will run a snag, which is just an angled hook that's pretty short. Generally going to replace the hook defender, which is an inside linebacker. Against the Broncos 3-4, Lamar's reading the outside backer who doesn't widen or expand at all with Marquise Brown in motion. And Marquise Brown is able to catch the ball and get to the sideline for an easy gain. Earlier in the game, they were on the same snag RPO concept. You'll see Lamar meshes with the running back, and this time he hits James Prochet on the little snag route, replacing the inside linebacker who had crossed over the midline when he saw a mesh between Lamar and the running back and the left guard and the left tackle pulling to the other side of the fort. As we get to the end zone angle here, number one, you'll see the linebacker keyed in directly on Latavius Murray who crosses Lamar's face. Left guard and left tackle pull, like I said. Lamar makes these reads incredibly fast. If you ask me, he's really a depth at the RPO reads. One thing that is slightly different with the Ravens RPO snag concept is they usually use someone in motion coming from the right side of the formation, perhaps trying not to allow the defense to set their coverage. But in any case, you'll see Rashad Bateman uh, come open here in the hook curl zone. And even though this was not a 3-4 defense, you can see that conceptually it worked out the same way. One guy expanded, and that allowed the snag route to fit in there between two defenders easily. One of the teams that runs the RPO snag concept a lot is the Eagles. They do it slightly different than the Ravens. They have the number one receiver lined up a little tighter. The number two guy's already on that side of the formation, as opposed to the Ravens, where, if you remember, Marquise Brown would go in motion. Still, they run it to their left side, which is predominantly what you're going to do with a right-handed quarterback. In this case, there's a strong safety or nickel defender in the box, number 26. He moves in as like a will linebacker. He's going to step up and fill that B gap as it looks like Miles Sanders is going to be getting the football. Jalen Hurts reads it quickly and correctly and then gets the ball out here to the snag concept for a huge gain. It's a great concept. It's essentially a triple option concept writ large. I'll explain that in a future video if people would like to see it. But that doesn't mean you can't bust big plays off of it. Look at the completion we just saw in the last play and check out what Justin Herbert and the Chargers are able to, to do to the Browns. They run Basically, they turn this snag into like a screen or a pick concept. The number one receiver doesn't really run an angled hook. He essentially runs for the outside shoulder of this safety or DB who's caught looking in the backfield. Herbert finds Jarrett Cook for a huge gain up the left sideline. So the RPO is not just a chain mover. What are the characteristics that are similar? Well, number one, the quarterbacks in all of these examples, Eagles, Chargers, and Ravens, are doing this to their left. As I mentioned, it's better for a right-handed quarterback to do that. You get the end zone angle here. You see how both of these DBs are caught looking in the backfield. The screen or the pick by the number one receiver works out perfectly. I actually kind of prefer to see teams, well, the Ravens specifically, run this concept with a compressed or tightly aligned number one split end and then not using the motion like they did in the two examples I showed you earlier. Check out this play from the Chargers win against the Bengals in their regular season. You'll see a tightly compressed right side of the formation. I think Keenan Allen is the number one wide receiver. This safety gets caught with his eyes looking in the backfield, just like the two DBs did for the Browns in the last clip. One of the things I began to mention in 2021 about week three or week four was how predictable some of the Ravens' formations were. And their formation where they had two receivers set to the left, 
and the back set to the side was generally predictable. It would be similar to this formation that the Cowboys use. The Falcons are trying to play man to this compressed side of the formation. The inside backer is going to go with the running back, which of course is a keep read for Dak Prescott, and he hits CeeDee Lamb on the snag concept into the vacated space as this strong safety or nickel runs to the flat route by the tight end. Even though the Falcons coaches are drawing this up as man-to-man, they've got to worry about the vertical by C.D. Lamb there, so the corner stays off, and there's a tremendous amount of space created with a very short route. One of the things I don't think the Ravens did enough of out of their formations where they utilize RPOs was run the football. Now, in some cases, teams were forcing a keep read by Lamar, which I'll cover that a little bit more later. All right, let's take a look at another Ravens RPO. This one we would call just a replace concept whereby the number two receiver, Marquise Brown, is going to replace the inside linebacker in the hook curl area. You can see the difference in formation. The two receivers are flanked out wider to the left. That's being done to kind of force the defense to declare with that third defender from the sideline. I'm talking about the inside linebacker, who essentially doesn't move. Really, this could have almost been a give read, depending on how you teach the concept. When you look at the end zone angle, as the running back crosses Lamar's face, we're going to be talking about that linebacker right there. And he doesn't move a whole lot, to be honest with you. But there was a lot of space created just by the alignment of the new number two receiver, making it almost impossible for that inside linebacker to expand and get out there. So as the season progressed, and once we got to about week five, teams began to notice when we would line up in this formation, they would set three over two. Now what the Chargers do here is they, it's this linebacker blitzes off the edge and then the strong safety drops down to replace and play inside leverage on Marquise Brown since they're trying to take away that in-breaking route. And then this linebacker is able to go with the running back, essentially forcing Lamar to make a pull read, keep the football. And he makes these reads, this adjustment, really quickly. You can see the blitzer off the edge gets in his face. He doesn't throw it to the slot guy, Marquise Brown, because he recognizes there's a safety inside leverage on him. He gets the football all the way out there to the bottom of the numbers to Bateman, who shakes for like an 11 or 12-yard gain. Look at, look at how quickly Lamar makes this read, and he's doing this while catching the football in the air. If you accept that he's reading the weak side inside linebacker here, he does it almost immediately and then gets his face mask looking out towards the sideline. And he recognizes the Chargers are trying to get interception by playing that safety inside leverage. Look, you can see his eyes are already out there on two. He's made his second decision in an instant. Now his third to deliver the football all the way out there to Bateman. That's one of the more underrated reads that I saw him make in 2021. I thought it deserved mention. Now, that wasn't the first time Lamar had seen that, though. Week 5 against the Colts, they did the same thing, played 3 over 2. They're going to let this strong safety or nickel defender play inside leverage or prochet and take away that route. Now, you can say the Duvernay might be open on this slant. I also offer to you that when teams saw us line up in this after four or five weeks, they understood what was coming and they were able to check into a coverage to take away what we wanted to do. We were entirely too predictable at a twins B. So what I mean by twins is two receivers to our left and then B meaning the halfback on the same side or opposite the tight end. There are also times where Lamar or any quarterback will make a pre-snap read based on this linebacker's alignment. In any case, in my opinion, I don't think the Ravens ran RPOs enough. I don't think we were diverse enough in, in punishing teams with the run away from the RPO side. The Chargers are one of the teams that remain a little more balanced in terms of run pass and not giving away their intentions with the formations. Justin Herbert hits the outside receiver. That's the number one guy closest to the sideline. They're running two breaking in-breaking routes. You can expect to see a whole lot more RPOs or at least pre-snap RPO plays used in the NFL because of the preponderance of how much it's being used in high school and college. Here's an example from week one. The Eagles really took advantage of a poorly coordinated Falcons defense. They went trips A gun, meaning the back is to the side of the trips. And this field side inside linebacker for the Falcons comes at a downhill angle quite heavy for being no mesh between the quarterback and the running back at all. This little screen out here to the field hit the Falcons really big on the first two plays. We'll check out the end zone angle just so you can see what I mean by poorly coordinated. You can see there's no mesh between the quarterback and the running back, and the inside linebacker and DN for the Falcons are both chasing the running back as if they're expecting a give. These are the types of screens that I think the Ravens coaching staff was thinking would punish the Dolphins' sticks cover zero look, but it just wasn't able to. They weren't. They, they really weren't able to make it work because they're not a true spread team. The Eagles are a spread to run team, if you ask me. The main way I've been able to tell if a team is actually a spread team is how smooth their bubble screens are. And you can see from these last two plays with the Eagles, they're very good at it. It also helps when the defense is as poorly coordinated as the Falcons were in week one. 
I'm not sure about you, but I was actually surprised and a little bit frustrated that the Ravens didn't run more RPO concepts in 2021, specifically for te- situations like this where the Raiders are playing three over two versus the Eagles. And what's happening is the Eagles are creating a nine on eight advantage to the top side of the screen. So you run the football to that side. Now the good defenses or even the average ones are going to take the DN and they're going to run him with the running back when there's a mesh. They're going to force a pull read or keep read for the quarterback. I'm not sure if you've seen the same thing that I have, and I don't really have any data to support it, but I feel like the Ravens' offense has actually been better when the running backs are set to Lamar's right or left as opposed to the pistol where they're direct lined up directly behind him. Now, in some cases, the defense isn't going to give you three over two, as you see the Saints are trying to do here. They've got a single high safety look, so you've got to use motion to pull that third defender out to that side of the field and and really isolate and attack that D end on the side of the running back. Now, every team doesn't have a guy like Jalen Hurts or Lamar Jackson. And and another thing about the Ravens' offense is I, I think they spent too much time switching between backfield alignments, meaning going from pistol to typical A and B gun shotgun sets. And, and I think there's just a lot of data accumulated, especially from 2020 and 2021. These NFL defenses are going to have the, all the data organized and prepared for their teams to go into the year understanding when we're in the pistol versus the typical shotgun, there's certain things we do and don't do. Let's look at a non-traditional RPO. This one's on the backside of a 3 by one or trip set. Darren Waller's a huge matchup problem. They're going to be reading this DN, which I believe is Von Miller, to be honest with you. And initially, this does just look like a zone read to the backside of a trip set, but I'm not too sure it is. If you watch, if we pause this at just the right moment, what you'll see is that the quarterback has a direct line of sight to this outside linebacker, or D.N. Von Miller, if you will, and through his outside shoulder to be able to see the coverage they're playing against Darren Waller. Now, he, gave, he gives the football here because Von Miller doesn't step down when the tackle steps down, but I believe there's the possibility to target Darren Waller backside on this, on this little quick out or speed out. Using the RPO game and and the zone read or any type of read option from the same backfield set, in in my opinion, is going to be way more productive in 2022 than switching backfield sets and and kind of being formation oriented. All right, now let's move to who I would consider to be the king of utilizing the RPO to, to establish play sequences, to install reactions in defensive players' minds and then take advantage of it. The Kansas City Chiefs. This is from their AFC title game win in 2020. Tyreek Hill is going to be used in motion away from the play concept, and I think that's key to, to kind of open up the field for other guys and maybe balance out the coverage. Now, this corner makes a great play on this flat route by Travis Kelty. It's a, it's a mirrored concept whereby the two routes on the right side of the field are exact mirror images of the two routes on the left. This is a play early in the first quarter, and, and it may seem inconsequential because it was a very short game, but I'm going to try to show you and convince you of how the Chiefs utilize motion and your memory against you. So here they use motion from the running back into the boundary, bring him into the backfield so they recognize it as zone coverage, first of all. And inside linebacker Tremaine Edwards recognizes that the running back is lined up on the same side as Kelsey. So what he does is he walks up and he tells the DN to spike inside the B-gap. That allows him to play C-gap and run with the shoot route or the flat route by Kelsey. If you remember, that's the route that hit early in the first quarter. Well, what happened is he expanded too wide. And Tyreek Hill is able to sneak in behind him on this little slant route into the hook area. As we get the end zone angle, which you'll see is that he actually, I think Edmonds actually tells the D end and the D tackle to spike into A and B gap so he can expand and play C. Look at all the space that is created. I think this is where the Ravens offense has got to go to. And this is not an isolated incident. What I say when I mean this is where the Ravens offense has got to go to is, is utilizing a primary play to set up the second and third play in a sequence. Maybe not in order one, two, three, but coming back to concepts and plays that worked before and and really building the ensuing plays off of them. The first play I showed you that was an RPO from early in the first quarter, they hit the flat route out to Kelsey. The corner made a nice play for a short gain. The second one, Tyree Kill was able to run and sneak a route in behind the inside linebacker. And now they've used Tyree Kill in motion, actually return motion, bringing him back to the field side in the flats and really occupying this curl seat, curl flat player, which I think is Tehran Johnson. I think as this develops, you'll see that he really could have thrown the ball out to Tyree Kill in the flats. The, defend, the curl flat defender did expand, but I think what they wanted all along was Travis Kelsey on this over route. And you can see what they've done is they've really confused Edmonds, who doesn't he doesn't really play this horribly. The number two receiver, the slot guy, runs a clear out route past him, which could have been a slant. You have to think that was in Edmonds' mind. But instead, now they're attacking with, with a backside route. And 
and it's another example of the Chiefs using motion, specifically motion by Tyreek Hill, their most dangerous player, to really manipulate multiple guys on the defense. You see how much those three players right there, those two inside linebackers in the boundary corner moved, and then it allows Travis Kelsey to sneak in behind the second level, and it still takes a great throw by Mahomes and a great catch by Kelsey to convert this. As you get the end zone angle, you'll see the havoc that it creates in the defense as Tyreek Hill goes in motion and how spectacular of a throw and catch this was. Mahomes pump fake because he almost threw it and, and then realized that the clear out routes to the field side were going to allow him to fit this between Edmonds and Tayron Johnson. Look, sometimes the Chiefs utilize the same formation or the same look to develop a run play, and this one's unsuccessful, and I'll break that down a little bit from the end zone angle as well. But you can see you've got trips to the field, the top side, and the running back set there as well. The Bills are going to fast flow this with their inside linebackers, which essentially means the front side guy is going to kind of wrong arm it. You also have a three technique who wins his battle over here as well. But in any case, the front side inside linebacker, he kind of wrong, his arm, wrong arms it, goes to the A gap, and that allows Tremont Edmonds to overflow it or fast flow it as the backside guy. What they've done here is what the, what the Chiefs do consistently is create conflict in certain defenders, run sequences of plays, and then at a time of their choosing – here late second quarter when they got a 14-9 lead, they hit you with the kill shot. So what they're going to do is they're going to double slants or two in-breaking routes by Tyreek Hill and the outside receiver, which is Nicole Hardman. And, and now the goal of those two routes is to pick or screen those two defenders, the inside linebacker and the safety, to the field. Now, as it turns out, they don't have to to screen the inside backer, Edmonds. He runs himself out of gear because the Bills are playing essentially what turns out to be man-free. Travis Kelsey ends up wide open in the flats. Very similar route to the first play I showed you in this sequence. Let's rewind it back one more time so you can see this route by Nicole Hartman on the outside. He's bringing his slant back to the inside, intentionally screening or picking that safety to clear the space to the sideline for Kelsey. From a, from a design standpoint and a sequential standpoint, the Chiefs are just on another level with how they use a lot, utilize RPOs to open up opportunities for every player on their team, not just Travis Kelsey and Tyreek Hill, who of course has since moved on to Miami. Now I'm going to try to bring this full circle. Again, all that film you just saw of the Chiefs was from 2020. What had they done? Well, they were consistently setting three receivers to one side, trips with the running back on the same side and utilizing either RPO concepts or like in this one here, some cases motion, to try to sift out the coverage and take advantage of second-level players for the Bills. Now, now it shouldn't be a surprise to any of us that in, in their 2021 divisional playoff thriller with these same Bills this past season, the Chiefs turned to similar formations and concepts once they got the ball in overtime and with a chance to win. So to summarize this, as I let some of those plays from this year's division round game play, if we're just talking about the RPO concept, I think the Ravens have the ability – and the scheme to be as good and dangerous as any other team in the league. But my caveat here, actually there's two, but, but the first caveat would be that there's a level that we ha just have not reached in terms of game planning, in-game adjustments, and ability to create high percent percentage situations for complementary players out of our RPO concepts. And, and what I mean is this, when we're running an RPO, we're just running an RPO to run it. We're not running it to set something else up, and that's the difference with the Chiefs. My second caveat in terms of saying the Ravens have the ability to be as good as any other team in the league at using the RPO is we're very beholden to using typical shotgun alignments for certain plays and then a pistol shotgun alignment for others. And in that manner, we give away our intentions depending on how the running back is set up pre-snap. I think it should be obvious to you that I have a lot of respect and admiration for how the Chiefs utilize the RPO. I think it's very comprehensive, and their, and their plans are not just made within one game. They're made across multiple seasons. The Chiefs know what coverages you've played depending on formations they've shown. They know how your players will react. There's just another level here that the Ravens have not reached with respect to how the RPO can be used as a short passing threat. I think there's certainly other opportunities to look at Raven, Ravens passing concepts, specifically the over and mesh plays that the Ravens use so much. But for now, I'm interested in what any of you have to say about the plays and the breakdown that I've presented so far. Thank you for checking out this video and supporting me in whatever way you can. This one took a really long time to edit. So if you, you enjoyed this type of film study, please let me know because it was a very arduous process. And, and I think for at least the next couple of days, my videos are going to have to be a little bit less high tech.